تو صاحب نور قائد نوز ڈیز واز ان واز ان مدینہ قاری فتح محمد رحمۃ اللہ وین یو ٹاک اباؤٹ سی سم بڑی دیٹ یو نو او مائی گاڈ قاری فتح محمد قاری فتح محمد بانی پتی واز ون اف دی گریٹس فار اف دی سنچری ہی ہی روت دی عنایت رحمانی دی شرح شاتبیہ ماشاءاللہ مینی پوز ان نوٹ اونلی دیٹ بٹ یو Many of the imams of Haram were his students. Huh? Yeah. Many of the imams of the Haram were his Haramain, in fact, were his students. Halifi and all of them used to study. Well, they were all influenced because he was like, you know, hands down, Sheikh of Quran. But, but that, that was one thing. But if you just saw this individual, you know, the same thing like, you know, these awliya Allah. He was, uh, you know, he was a walking Quran, you know. And, uh, you know. He wasn't just half of the Quran of one qira'ah, all the qira'ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him in Medina Manora. I saw him sitting. And, uh, you know, he gave me, he, he used to, the, the house that we lived in, on, we, 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 we originally lived in Marwa, right on top of Marwa, Safa and Marwa. It was the Imarat al-Ashraf. It was the old building of the Ashraf from Makkah in the old days. It's a waqf. So, you know, it belonged to one of our, you know, one of our elders there in Makkah. So we used to live over there. And so Qadi Fatih Muhammad, when he would come, he would stay there. Mulani Idris from Bin Uri Tani, Mufti Wali Hassan, all these people would come and they would stay there. Sheikh Saeed used to always come and stay there. So Qari Fatih Muhammad gave me a sadriya. Sadriya is, you know, like a vest, a sort of vest sweater, which obviously, you know, I kept that as a, as a, as a, as a tabarruk, you know. And then after a while, it disappeared. And then come to find out my son Abdul Rahman had snatched it. <laughs> and uh, so he still got it, mashallah. He still got that, I think, I... And Abdul Rahman, by the way, he's the best Qari of our of my kids, you know, he really reads Quran nice. So, yeah, Qari, Qari Fatih Muhammad, subhanAllah. I mean, and this was a guy, Saim al dahr You know, he would never accept on, you know, Eidain. And... Uh, Saim al dahr means fasting the entire year. Yeah, he'd, he'd, fast, he'd be fasting continuously. He'd only break his fast. And if you wanted to offer salah, just like, you know, uh, Sheikh Murabat al-Hajj, If you wanted to say salam to him and it was not makru time, if he wasn't la yukri, if he wasn't, you know, teaching somebody or listening to somebody, he'd be in, in nafal salat. And by the way, he was blind. He was in a wheelchair. He couldn't walk. He weighed about 60 pounds. I don't know. The guy was just skin and bones, you know. But you see his face, it was like, I mean, you would look at his face, you know, like, you know, like the hadith. I was looking at the face of Rasulullah so looking at the, at the moon, which is more, you know, his face. That fa- I, I've never seen anything like that. Just radiance, radiance, you know. And his, uh, one, of my, one of my colleagues, you know, in, in Durus and with Mashayikh was actually a, a very, was a very good Qadi who came to Mecca and he was teaching Quran in Haram. And uh, Qadi Abdul, what's his name? I think he's still alive. Anyway, he was a Qadi, he was a Khas Khadim of Qadi Fatih Muhammad. special, you know, servant of Qari Muhammad. So he used to tell us that, you know, Qari Fatih Muhammad would be like sleeping and his lips would be going. Allah. And sometimes an ayat, you'd hear an ayat. I mean, it's like, so he's even in, in sleep, he's reading Quran, you know. And I mean, he was, you know, Ahl al-Quran, Ahl al-Lai wa khasatuhu. So, What's that? Yeah, did you see him? Allah Akbar. And he was, a, and what other people don't know about him perhaps is that he was a famous sheikh also. He was, you know, he had a lot of murids. He was like, Allah wala yani number one, you know, subhanAllah. Unbelievable person, yeah. So anyway, so, but, uh, Yeah, so, so after graduating from there, then I, I actually, I, I had been in Pakistan a few times. And what I liked about Pakistan, you could do what, you know, what you wanted to do. You could do things. In the Arab world, you can't do it. You know, you follow the protocol and keep quiet and just flow, go with the flow. But Pakistan, you can do things. And that was the beautiful thing. It was the one place in the Muslim world where you could actually do things and things were being done. And so... Yeah, so basically my risk was there, so that's where I ended you up. You mentioned from, from Makkah you went to Pakistan uh, as, because of the, the freedom there versus the repressive regime. Yeah. Uh, and then during your discussion, you just dropped the name of Sheikh Saeed Ahmad Khan. Yeah. So he, how was your experience with him 
having the opposite story from Pakistan or India coming to well, Mecca. Actually, it was his mashwara that, you know, I, I went to Pakistan because actually he was, he was our, he was our sheikh and he was, mashallah, sheikh, sheikh, there's, if anybody asks me, people ask me, have you met anybody that, you know, was like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I said, yeah, there's two people. I mean, uh, obviously, like oh. Rasulullah SAW, yani yeah. uh, 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 yani, yeah. al-mushab, mushabaha, min, it, it's quite a big difference, you know, so, but two of them, I won't mention who is the other one for various reasons, the, but one I will mention is Sheikh Said Ahmed Khan. This, this was a person, when you see his life, you would see the life of Rasulullah SAW. His tawadi and his fikr and his, you know, the, everything about him. And that's why actually Mulana Ilyas sent him to Hijaz, you know. Because he was there from like, he was actually, he came there, he went there when the Saudi, you know, uh, you know things started during the time of King Abdul Aziz. And he and Prophet Mulana Ubaidullah was another sheikh from. Uh, Mulana Ubaidullah Sindhira. No, no, no. Mulana Ubaidullah Baliavi, I mean. From, you yeah, know, yeah, from, yeah. from Nizam Adin. Yeah. So they were sent by Mulana Ilyas to Hijaz, you know, during the time of, of, uh, of the King Abdul Aziz. And, you know, so these two Indians walking around, so, you know, who are these guys? What are they doing? So they grabbed them and started interrogating, what are you guys doing? And they eventually took them to the king and said, hey, these guys are walking around, you know, and misguiding people. We don't know what they're into. So the king said, okay, well, what are you guys, what are you into? And so they explained, but it's tabligh. So the king said, wow, that's wonderful. And he wrote down, a hand wrote a letter for them that this is Sheikh Sayyid Ahmed Khan with Rufaqahu, and they should be left to move anywhere they want, and they should be given full freedom and to help them wherever they are, and signed by the king, you know, the one who established the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You know, and then later he, uh, and I'll tell you an amazing thing about him, so he, you know, he was a Saudi citizen, you know, they, and from, from, you know, day one. And Molana Ilyas, when he sent him, you know, he, he mentioned that, you know, in Nizam Adin, that he's going to send somebody to Hijaz. So at that time, you know, Molana uh, Abul Hassan Ali Nedwi and Molana Badri Alam and, and all these, you know, Mashayikh who were actually, you know, around. Well, was too yeah, and all were around Molana Ilyas in those days, you know. So every one of them was hoping, I'm going to be that one that's going to be sent to. So then in the morning, he says, uh, I'm sending Sayyid, Sayyid, Sayyid Khan. Nobody can figure that out, you know. I mean, this guy, you know, what's, what's his... You know, Sheikh Said, he said, you know, I, I flunked Bukhari. You know, he, he wasn't this academic kind of guy, you know. He said, I, I failed the, the test of Bukhari. Huh? He didn't repeat anything. Nobody fails, actually. I mean, he didn't pass that. Time. You don't fail in the Madaris in Pakistan, you know. You mushy al-hal, you know, you get through. He said, I just, you know, I, I just thought about things I heard from Malani Elias and wrote it down, but I guess the teacher wasn't. He was actually in Saharanpur. He did his, uh, all that in Saharanpur, the Sheikh al-Hadith. So anyway, so, so the ulama, they, they said, you know, sending this guy, I mean, he's not known for scholarship. He's not known for, you know, so why are you sending him? I mean, you know, okay, fine, but, you know, like Malaika, you know, why did you choose, you know, Adam? You know, what's, what's his special thing, you know? So he said, because I have seen him the closest in resemblance and following of Rasulullah And that's what it's about. You leave all that other stuff, you know, ittiba Rasul. In kuntu tehibun Allah. That was his life. And I'll tell you, there's so many things, you know, just like all these mashaykh that you mentioned, I mean, their whole lives were just... But I'll tell you one of the most amazing things that I saw was Sheikh Saeed. Now, keep in mind, who, who gave him, you know, the permission to stay in Saudi Arabia? The founder of the, of the kingdom. The founder of the kingdom. With all tarheeb, you know. Now, later on, as things got, you know, from 1979, 1979, I don't know if you, uh, those who are older, there was a, you know, that Jahiman and that whole war in the Haram, these guys yeah. tried to take over the Haram, claimed it was over. Mahdi, and there was a, you know, so we were there in those days. You, know, you were there was, when they took, yeah, tried to take over the Haram. That was, that was one of the most surreal events of my life. I, I can't even, I won't even go into that. In any case, during that, 
So, you know, as I said, you know, they do what they want. So they, Sheikh Saeed and others, they just disappeared for like six months. It's not like you call your lawyer or you find out, you, you know, you're gone, you're gone. You don't even ask anybody what's happened to them. Because after that, then everybody looked like they were religious or whatever, and they had any kind of doubt about it. They just, you know, you're gone. You might come back, you might not. Okay, then three or four times they just did this to him, you know. They, you know, they just take him and, and you know, imprison him for, for months on end. So if the youth are not understanding, he, he didn't just disappear on his own voluntarily. That means he was picked up by the yeah, authorities. Yeah, picked up by the intelligence, you know, yeah. and held, you he was know, jailed. where, where, yeah, nobody knows. So this went on for several years. I mean, for, you know, a few decades, you know, they kept from, from time to time, you know, they, they take him and, 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 and then ultimately, they took away his citizenship and exiled him out of the country. 